We are live. Hallelujah. <laughs> it's good to be alive. And uh, it's good to be here with my dear friend, Rabbi Highland Slobotkin from Beit Tikva Messianic Congregation in Seattle. And I'm Stuart Winograd, co-founder, along with my wife, Chantal, of Reach Initiative International, a Messianic Jewish ministry, ministering in Belarus, India, North America. And some of you have heard of this place, Israel? Yeah. Uh, okay, and today we're in we're between Rosh Hashanah or Yom Teruah, Yom Teruah, the day of the blowing of the shofar, one of God's appointed times, called traditionally in the Jewish world Rosh Hashanah, the head of the year, the Jewish New Year, which is the civil Jewish New Year, because it really doesn't come in the spiritual new year, which is the month of Nisan in the spring that God declared our spiritual new year. But it is the civil new year in Israel and acknowledged by Jews around the world. And it's the 10 days between Ro Rosh Hashanah, Yom Teruah, and Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. Very significant time. Rabbi Hyland, would you tell us a little bit about this, please? Yeah, so what's interesting is that you and I know so much about these topics that we could both do our own well, our own shows, our own episodes on this, but uh, it's really fun to, to share with you and, and to, for us, for the two of us to play off of each other. So yeah, the, the 10 days of awe, so um, uh, Rosh Hashanah or Yom Teruah, as you said, begins on the first day of the seventh month, the month of Tishrei. And then it goes for 10 days and Yom Kippur, Day of Atonement, um, is on the 10th day of Tishrei. What's interesting in the, in the Hebrew, in Leviticus 23, when we're given these festivals, these appointed times of the Lord, it actually doesn't say Yom Kippur, it says Yom HaKippurim, which is the Day of Atonement. It's actually plural, which makes a little bit more sense because it's for the nation of Israel. So, um, uh, it, in the Hebrew, actually, I'm going to read the Hebrew. It says, uh, Adonai el Moshe lemor. Lord's, uh, The Lord spoke to Moses, and he said, um, uh, et nafshotechem. He said, Humble your souls, okay, during, this, these, during these times. And um, it doesn't say how to humble your soul. Aniti et nafshotechem. It's all it says. So, but there's a verse in um, <clears throat> Psalm 35, where King David says, Initi betsom nafshi, I humbled my soul with fasting. So the same, the same verbiage in Leviticus 23, uh, the anitem or aniti nafshotecha nefesh, your soul. So because David humbled his soul with fasting, the Jewish community has connected that to Leviticus 23 and basically said, on Yom Kippur, we fast. So during these 10 days of awe leading up to Yom Kippur, uh, there are days of what we call introspection or um, reflection. And uh, there's a couple of verses that, that uh, are meaningful. One is from um, Psalm 26 that says, examine me, O Lord, try me and test my inner man and my heart. Now, how often do we ask the Lord to test us, test our inner man and our heart. But examine me, O Lord. Is there anything in my life that needs correction, that needs adjustment, that needs change? And so during these 10 days of awe, we reflect, we introspect, and we say, and we ask God to um, intervene as well. If we can't think of anything we need to change, God will tell us. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great time for repentance, not only for ourselves individually, but to uh, ask God for forgiveness, but also to ask other people for forgiveness if something comes to mind where we haven't made it right with someone else. And uh, it's good to have peace with our loved ones and uh, other people in our lives. And forgiveness is a huge blessing, first from heaven uh, toward each of us individually and toward each other. And uh, I want to mention that f for uh, me and Highland and many others have joined us, 
at the beginning of the month of Elul, which was the month before Rosh Hashanah began, the month of Tishrei, we began a 40-day fast, and uh, it's going to end on Yom Kippur, at the uh, sundown of Yom Kippur. And the purpose of this fast was to exactly what Highland said, but we had a few additional points, was self-reflection, a time for seeking God and allowing him to bring the light of his word, the light of his Ruach, his spirit, in a fresh and deeper way into our lives so that we get purified and we become more like our Messiah and Savior, Yeshua. And, uh, and we wanted to intercede during this time when the world is going through, it seems like the whole world is in free fall and in moral mm -hmm. chaos and confusion. And uh, I can go on and on about that, but we, we decided we wanted to fast and pray for a great revival of the body of Messiah. Mm -hmm. Because it seems like in, in too many parts of the world, the body is either greatly distracted or compromising with sin or kind of sleeping. And, and so that we would realize that potential that we have within us, Messiah, the great reviver in us individually and corporately, and that at the same time, pray for a great outpouring of God's spirit uh, so that it would have the result of Yeshua's name being glorified throughout the earth in greater and greater ways. And it would bring in, first it would send forth uh, the gospel, the good news of Yeshua virally through this revived body and this outpouring of God's spirit and that there would be a tremendous harvest of thousands and even tens of thousands in this year that began on Rosh Hashanah uh, just a few days ago, that there would be a great harvest of even tens of thousands of Jewish people and non-Jewish people, Gentiles, who are wandering in darkness, many of them losing hope, many of them living in desperate circumstances, and who are in desperate need and urgent need of the love and salvation of the Messiah of Israel, who's the Savior of the world, Yeshua, Jesus. Hey, Stuart, Stuart, I, I just got a text from a friend of mine, and uh, we have a mutual friend who's going to these uh, county fairs. I don't know if you have them in, in Atlanta or whatever, but we have these, these, these uh, fairs in different counties all around the state of Washington. And so... At one fair, so we have a friend who's been going to these fairs, and there's a booth there where they pray with people to, you know, they talk about the Lord, they, talk, they witness to them, they share their faith, and, and the question they ask them is, um, are you going to heaven? Okay, so to make it short, uh, over 2,530 individuals have prayed to accept Yeshua jesus into their hearts in at three at four different fairs wow and, and that uh at the last one 200 souls were saved she she's telling me this is a christian terminology of course um with with an estimate of of, of one every three minutes wow. so that's pretty amazing in, in this amazingly liberal state that uh, people are hungry because like you're saying the world's in a, in a free fall, and people are looking for answers. Yeah, and tell us a little bit about the rabbi's understanding of these 10 days of awe, and then what they're hoping for, religious Jews, Orthodox Jews are hoping for on Yom Kippur, and how that differs from how we, as Messianic Jews and followers of Yeshua, understand this. Okay, so... That's a really good question. Um, I'd say the, the, the primary difference is on Yom Kippur, uh, well, okay, back up 10 days. On Rosh Hashanah or Yom Teruah, as you said, the, we call it the feast. The, it's uh, technically the, the day of blowing. Yom Teruah means the day of blowing. In, in the Hebrew, it doesn't even say trumpets or shofars. It just says the day of blowing. But implied. we have to blow something, so... We don't want to blow it or 
blow bubbles. So we Let's not blow it at all. <laughs> <laughs> we Let's make it. Yeah. Yeah. Because on, 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 you know, numerous, numerous places, as you know, it says the blowing of the shofar. So we, we take it, understand the uh, feast of trumpets. I like to call it the feast of shofars myself. Um, on that day, we begin praying, or the Jewish community begins praying that during these 10 days of awe that we're talking about today on this episode of our Facebook Live, during these 10 days of awe, um, our, we, we are seeking God in such a way, and we're, you know, introspection, we're confessing, we're repenting, so that when Yom Kippur comes 10 days later, God will see fit to bless us by writing our names in his book of life for another year. Now, the big difference for us as believers in Yeshua is that um, Yeshua is the atonement of the day of atonement. He is the Kippurah of Yom Kippur. And so when we accept him, and believe in him as, as Messiah, as, as Redeemer, as Savior, our names are written in not the book of life, but the Lamb's book of life. And that comes right from Revelation chapter 21. Right. Yes. And that is a very critical difference because we are, once we put our faith in the life, death, and resurrection of the promised prophesied all throughout the Tanakh, Messiah, and Yeshua fulfilled those prophecies one after the other, uttered oh, by, by our prof Jewish prophets throughout the centuries, throughout the ages. Once we put our faith in his life, death, and resurrection, the sacrifice that he made for us, he cleanses us of our sins. He regenerates us and gives us a born again, a new life, and a promise of eternal fellowship with God that begins on this earth in the Olam Hazeh and continues into the world to come, heaven in the Olam Haba. And so we have this assurance that if we continue to sincerely follow after Yeshua, we are written in the book of life year after year after year. Now mm -hmm. we do understand that what a man sows, he reaps. So if we, as followers of Yeshua, sow to our flesh, sow to our sinful desires, we're going to reap a pretty nasty year, even though we're still written in the book of life. And hopefully we don't totally turn off to Yeshua, because that's a very dangerous thing. I don't want to get into that now. Uh, um but if we sow, if we are sincere and intentional and wholehearted about sowing a life day after day of faithful obedience to Yeshua and his teachings and commands, then we are going to have a great year written in the book of life for sure, and a great year, even if circumstances are difficult or terrible because we will have that intimate fellowship with the life giver, Yeshua. And so uh, we are not in fear and trembling in the sense of, oh, we're going to get a good judgment on Yom Kippur. We have that assurance. What we are in fear of trembling of is we want the whole world, all of our Jewish people and everybody else, because the love of God dwells in us, to know the way, the truth, and the life, the lover of your soul, whether you're Jewish or not Jewish, Messiah, Yeshua, we want you to have that fullness of yeah. life. And so we are in urgent self-reflection, so we're growing more like him, but intercession. And I want to call all of the followers of Yeshua and all of my Christian brothers and sisters in the church and those uh, followers of Yeshua and Messianic congregations, join with us in this prayer, in this intercession, and fasting in some way that's comfortable for you between now and Yom Kippur to really pray, to seek God for your own self, but to really join us in intercession for this revival of the body of Messiah, an outpouring of the Ruach HaKodesh, 
like in the book of Acts, and a great harvest, because compassion moves us, a great harvest of those who do not yet know the love, salvation, and eternal life offered only through one name, the name of Yeshua. Hey, I could listen to you all day, brother. <laughs> well, that, that's, you, that's why we're here. That's good stuff, you know. Um, yeah, by the way, I'm I'm going to be fasting until the end of Yom Kippur, which is going to be this year, Thursday night at sundown. We call that Ne'ilah, which is the closing of the gates. And which is another thing I want to read a scripture. The end of Yom Kippur, the Jewish community calls it the closing of the gates, the, the end when your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life and God closes the gates and you, you have to wait another year to ask him again. That's, yeah. this, 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 that's this thing about the, the system that the Jewish community has really created. It's not scriptural, but they no. created it so that we have to keep coming to God every year and, uh, and ask God to forgive us. But in Revelation 21, I have my Bible right here. It says this, uh, the, the revelator or John, Yohanan, he said, I saw no, this is talking about the New Jerusalem. I saw no temple in it for the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb, that's Yeshua, are its temple. And the city has no need of the sun or the moon to shine upon it, for the glory of God has illumined it, and its lamp is the Lamb. So the Yeshua, Messiah, is the, the light and the lamp of this new Jerusalem. And the nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth shall bring their glory into it. And in the daytime, there shall be no, no night there. Its gates shall never be closed. So yes. in this new Jerusalem, the gates don't close. They're open for us. We are, we are um, uh, perpetual dwellers in the kingdom of God. And then finally, it says in, in the last verse in chapter 21, um, nothing unclean, no one who practices abomination or lying shall ever come into this place, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You know, That's I want stuff. to add one beautiful nuance to the beautiful things that you just read from Revelation, and thank you for reading that. And that is, you know, for as long as we live on the earth, the gate, the door is open to us to receive the grace of God that's only available Amen. through Messiah Yeshua. So it's available. If you don't yet know Yeshua's love, grace, and salvation, it's available to you today, tomorrow, on Yom Kippur, and on the days following, and during Sukkot, and on the days following. But when you die, you need to understand, and this is what's written in the scriptures, it's appointed to man to live once, no reincarnation, and then we die once, and then comes our judgment. And if we are not already written in the book of life, the Lamb's book of life, the way, the truth, and the life, Yeshua, if we are not written in that book before we take our last breath on this earth and leave, completely this earth and this body, then uh, we are at great risk of eternal separation from uh, a holy God. You know, Stuart. Holy, but holy. And, yeah. uh, you know, that's, a, that's an awe-striking thing. And that's why we're in prayer that everyone would know the love of salvation of, of the God of Israel through Messiah Yeshua. You know, Stuart, when I first heard this message about eternal life, and about well, places like heaven and hell, I remember thinking to myself, hmm, if this is true, I had better take this very seriously. And I did. I took it very seriously. I began to read the Bible for the first time. I never thought the Bible was even relevant to my life. I was into Hinduism and all kinds of far out things. I thought the Bible was kind of lame, you know, and kind of stoic. But then I started reading that God, God spoke the world into existence I, I remember thinking as a as a hippie wow this is really far out man you know <laughs> and and i took it seriously about yeah. what you're what you're talking about life and death we're given one chance hebrews that verse you you just quoted was hebrews 9 27 we're we're you know is appointed for man to die once and then comes judgment so all those who are listening today listening today if there's anyone here who has never asked yeshua messiah 
the son of God, to come into your life, to be Lord of your life, to be your Messiah, you need to do that today. This could, this, today could be the first day of your everlasting life. Yes, well said, brother. And, uh, you know, I want to invite any of my Jewish friends who are listening, who, who are still contemplating this message. If you have questions, feel free to reach out to me. You can go to uh, the Reach Initiative International website, reachii.org, or, or message me, or reach out to Rabbi Hyland and uh, message him through his uh, Beit Tikva Messianic Congregation Seattle uh, Facebook or their website. Mm -hmm. We'll be happy to talk to you. I mean, uh, you know, I, I went through a long period of searching months before, you know, I made my conclusion and it was the the word of God and the presence of God really that made the difference. But I needed some help from human beings. And right. I'm grateful for those people who helped me to kind mm -hmm. of put it all together from the Bible and uh, what the Holy Spirit was beginning to work in my life. So it would be our privilege to give you our heart and time and do our best to serve you. So feel free to reach out if you have any questions or needs or concerns. And uh, to our Christian friends, uh, we hope that we're giving you a good understanding of what Messianic Jews believe. You know, we're Bible-centered, we're Yeshua-centered, and uh, we hope that many of you who have not yet engaged with us during these, this time of prayer and fasting, you will, and you'll intercede and join with us for those same three broad points that cover many sub points. Uh, and you'll be praying and, and uh, fasting with us in some way. Yeah, so just, just as, we, as we're wrapping up the program today, we're, we're sort of focusing on the 10 days of all, the Yamim no Ra'im in Hebrew, which could also be translated the terrible days, the days where we, we're considering our behavior and our speech, um, our inward thoughts, uh, our relationships. So we're seeking forgiveness from those we may have hurt or wounded, and also forgiveness uh, from God for unconfessed sin. And um, I mentioned um, a couple of scriptures, but what I want to say is that it, uh, the prophet Haggai, he says this, consider your ways. So we stop. Literally, it means set your heart on your ways. Do our ways need some adjustment? So reflection. And then I mentioned Psalm 26, where David said, examine me, O Lord, try me, test my inner man and my heart. So these are days of introspection. And then finally, uh, if we confess our sins to God, he is faithful and righteous to forgive our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And then if we've sinned against someone, um, uh, Yaakov, a.k.a. James says, confess your, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you, that you may be healed. So really confession, repentance, introspection. That's what right now, these are the days we're working through. And I have some, I, I woke up thinking about someone that I have uh, a broken relationship with. And I don't know if they're even open to having a discussion with me, but I, I'm praying for that person. And maybe the Lord will open up a door where we can have a dialogue and maybe get some healing in a broken relationship. Wonderful. Thank you for encouraging us all in this. And uh, in a few minutes, I want to close up with uh, some prayer. But before I do, uh, I just want to remind everybody that you can also catch the recordings, listen or watch any of these episodes uh, on the Reach Initiative Facebook page and on the Beit Tikva Facebook page, you can find the recorded episodes uh, to watch or listen, and you will find them at reachii.org, R-E-A-C-H-I-I.org, so you can, uh, you can watch or listen again, or you can kind of catch uh, pieces that you missed, and you can share it with others that you think these these episodes might help, and uh, we want to be helpful, and we want to proclaim the goodness of God to our Jewish people and all people, and uh, educate the body of Messiah, uh, both both Christians and Messianic Jews, on uh, 
uh, some of the important aspects of the way God is leading us during these 10 days of awe. So uh, thank you for taking advantage of all of that. And uh, as we go into prayer, uh, Rabbi Highland, both you and I have a, a background in which uh, we have in various ways, we won't go into it, but in various ways we have uh, um, stood for the sanctity of all human life, including preborn children, and sought to help mothers and fathers avoid the tragedy of taking the life of their own child. Mm -hmm. And uh, recently, uh, there has been a law passed in Texas uh, that is prohibiting abortion after a heartbeat can be detected, which is at six weeks or 42 days. And the Supreme Court, uh, there was a challenge to this law, and the Supreme Court upheld it. And there is new hope that in our nation, the uh, Roe versus Wade decision that legalized abortion on demand and uh, uh, Roe, uh, who, who was just deceived by deceitful lawyers and has since repented, accepted Yeshua and uh, rejected everything that she was a part of in, in facilitating this Roe versus Wade decision that legalized abortion on demand. Now we have a chance to overturn this great deception. And uh, so I just want to include that in our prayers also. So uh, maybe what we'll do is I'll lead off into this and then you can close us and then we'll end our episode. Sounds good. Okay. Avino Makenu, our great God, our great father, you are our king and you are our father. And we stand in awe of you as a holy, almighty creator. And we stand in awe also that you welcome us as beloved sons and daughters. And uh, we just thank you for the life that you've given us through Messiah Yeshua. And we pray, Father, speaking of life, we pray that this life, Lord God, that Jewish people and Gentile people all over the world would open up to this love from heaven and this life, this, this abundant life on earth and eternal life that you have provided uh, for everyone. It is inclusive of anybody and everyone, but it's exclusive in the sense that it's only provided through the Son of God, the Messiah of Israel, Yeshua. Let the gospel go viral and let many come into this abundant eternal life abundant life on earth and eternal life with Yeshua. And Lord God, for the preborn, Lord God, which sadly America is at the forefront in many ways of, of, of this great deception of thinking it's just tissue and uh, um, abortion that's happening in some places right up to the ninth month, a terrible suffering for these children and a tragedy for mom and dad no matter when it is. And Lord God, we just pray that there would be an overturning, that truth would reign, that justice for the unborn and the families, the mothers and fathers that have been misled would come, that forgiveness for all those who have already aborted their children would, would be abundant and inner healing for them as they come to you, Yeshua, Jesus, and uh, that the law would be overturned and righteousness would again reign, and truth would again reign in this nation. We thank you for hearing our prayer in Yeshua's name. Yes, and Lord, as Jews, we understand the, the uh, horrific history of the Holocaust when one, one people group, one nation, decided that there was a life not worthy to be lived. And God, we see this as another type of Holocaust, where in the in the U.S. alone, over 62 million babies have been slaughtered in the mother's wombs in various ways. And God, there is a an evil philosophy that there is a life not worthy to be lived, and that's the life in the womb, the preborn, the unborn. And so, Lord, we come against this right now. We thank you that uh, Governor Abbott signed this law. Uh, in, 
signed this 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 law into being and that the, our supreme court of the united states upheld it god we thank you for that and we pray and i agree with uh, rabbi stewart that this this will lead to an overturning of roe v wade where abortion was made legal through the nine months of pregnancy for any reason for any reason mm -hmm. so we pray for the sanctity of human life god you are the creator of life you you are the creator of life you are the way the truth and the life so lord we ask for for mercy and we ask for justice to roll down like an ever-flowing stream god i thank you for these times where we can stop and pray i thank you for my my brother uh, rabbi stewart and for these episodes we're doing here on various topics i pray lord that many would benefit and you would be glorified in the mighty name of yeshua we pray amen amen well we'll be back with you next week live at 5 p.m eastern 2 p.m pacific time we'll be talking about yom kippur the day of atonement and many subjects surrounding yom kippur so we'll look forward to being with you next wednesday 5 p.m eastern 2 p.m uh pacific right here and until then we greet you with a Typical Rosh Hashanah greeting for the Jewish New Year. Leshana Tova Umetuka. Have a good and sweet year. We love you. We bless you. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, Shana Tova.